Hello and welcome back to WePC. In this video, we will be reviewing the Razer Death Adder version 2. Remember, if you're new around here, to hit the subscribe button and if you enjoy the video, give us a thumbs up. The Death Adder line of mice has been a staple of FPS gaming for well over 10 years and has been hugely successful over that period. With Razer announcing over 10 million units being sold across the line, it's great to see further development since the Death Adder Elite back in 2016. The Razer Death Adder version 2 is the brand's latest improvement on a classic, with an updated optical sensor, more responsive optical switches, new shoes or feet, and a slight design refresh. The Razer packaging remains the same as it was a year ago, with their signature sleek black and green design on the box. On top of your usual tech specs, we see the inclusion of all the latest changes they have made on the mouse and a small marketing badge letting you know that over 10 million copies have been sold. The Razer Death Adder version 2 is an all too familiar shape, but just in case you haven't considered this ergonomic classic, it is essentially on the larger size of a medium. In terms of size, the version 2 is the same length as its predecessor, with a slightly narrower grip width and a small reduction in height by literally one millimeter. This is a right-handed ergonomic mouse and the medium size is comparable to the Zowie EC1B and the Corsair Glaive. All three of these mice fit in the hand snugly. The mouse is long enough to rest my palm on comfortably and feels as though the grip width is tailored to my specific playstyle, which is more of the palm claw grip. The hump of the mouse is still as unobtrusive as the older Elite model and goes a long way to supporting my hand and adding comfort. So if you are used to the size of the older Death Adder, the version 2 size definitely won't catch you off guard. However, the weight is a different story. Let's talk about some of the changes between this and the 2016 Death Adder Elite. The first major change is the weight reduction. Razer has been cutting the weight each iteration and now the V2 stands 16 grams lighter than its predecessor, now weighing just 80 grams. The Death Adder V2 weighs the same as the Logitech G Pro Wireless. The weight of a mouse is entirely dependent on a person by person basis. For me, this mouse is a little too light. The mouse is still as big as the older models, yet has a more hollow feel to it from that reduction in the weight. Even when the Death Adder weighed 148 grams back in 2013, it was still relatively easy to push around the mouse pad, thanks to its easy grip shape and effective feet. The version 2 speeds around even the most abrasive of pads, and that is largely down to the updated PTFE strips we see underneath reducing friction and making this feel even lighter. The classic shape of this mouse is really what makes it distinctly a death adder. Regardless of if you're a fan of Razer or not, the safe and comfortable shape of this mouse is undeniably one of the best ever created. As previously mentioned, this is more on the medium size and therefore those with smaller hands may find it rather uncomfortable to handle. However, in my case, the curves gently blend together to form a supreme shape with the unobtrusive hump supporting my knuckles perfectly. The thumb groove mounted near the side buttons is also the perfect shape and does well to house my thumb, leaving the buttons in close touching distance. On the right hand side of the mouse is where we see the first small design change. The shape slopes gently down the shell to the front, naturally running your fingers into the concave like primary buttons. The matte black finish on the shell has a complete overhaul with razor moving away from the smooth and going back to micro textured. The new texture is slightly rough to the touch when compared with the Elite, and while it's still pleasant to hold, I much prefer the smoother material on the Elite, Mamba, and Basilisk version one. The side grips have been reworked and feel less chunky. With the original Elite, the side grips protrude outwards and it felt like you were gripping them more than the mouse itself. The switches underneath the primary buttons were one of the major developments with Razer's new mice. The new and improved optical switches appear to be a love em or hate em type scenario, with them feeling less crisp and tactile when compared to the older models. It is worth noting that the 0.2 millisecond actuation difference in the switches isn't noticeable, but the fact is they are faster and more durable too. The Omron switches we saw in the Death Adder Elite were good for 50 million clicks, these optical switches are good for 70 million, so longevity gets a point here. Another change from Razer is with their DPI switching buttons located at the top of the mouse just behind the scroll wheel. The shell has now been changed to slightly accommodate the buttons in an attempt to get them out the way. The side buttons remain as satisfying as the Death Adder Elites, with excellent actuation and little chance of accidental presses. Razer changed the mouse wheel's appearance and tactile feel to something that closely matches the Mamba Wireless. Let's do a quick sound test so that you can hear all the noises this mouse makes.
Yet another change from the previous Death Adder is with the new cable. The cable on the Elite was reasonable for a braided cable. However, the Speedflex cable featured on the V2 is lighter and super flexible. The cable is 2.1 meters long, just like the Elite, and while the material has come a long way, you're still going to want to tuck this under your keyboard or buy a bungee. The Death Adder version 2 upgrades don't end just yet, with the sensor being swapped out for Razer's latest Focus Plus optical sensor. The sensor on the older Elite was excellent and is still regarded as one of the best out there. The Focus Plus sensor is essentially a PWM 3399 and was pretty much flawless throughout testing. I feel silly mentioning the marketing patter of DPI, but this latest Death Adder can now go to the dizzying height of 20,000. Great, right? Well, no, as I have never met anyone that uses more than 1600. Either way, anyone who wants to hit a target in-game will never use this much DPI, but it's there for you if you need it. <laughs> Mission failed. We'll get them next time. Like all Razer mice, the software you're going to need to make changes is Razer Synapse. If you aren't a fan of the software, then don't worry, as the Death Adder version 2 comes with onboard memory. This means you can save all your settings to the mouse and then uninstall the software. Lastly, Razer has included a profile button on the underside of the mouse, just as we saw on the Mamba Wireless. This button was useless for me as I keep the mouse the same for all games, but it's nice to have options. An update on a classic can be risky business, but for once, we see more than just a refresh. It seems like Razer have listened and made excellent changes to the mouse's design and performance. If you can forgive the lightweight nature of the version 2 and you're a fan of the Death Adder, then upgrading to this makes a lot of sense. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, please give us a thumbs up, hit that notification bell so you never miss a video and click to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.